Hello and welcome to your Tangle of the Day. My name is Amy Lillian Harper and I am a certified Zen Tangle instructor as well as being a librarian at the Wilton Library in the Children's Department and I'm here to do a Tangle with you today. Before we get started I just want to go over our materials. So we are going to be working on this little tile. It's called a Bijou and as you can see it's quite small. This is a standard size tile. It's roughly three and a half square and you can see that the bijou is roughly a quarter the size of that. Um, the reason I'm working on such a small tile is because I'm only doing one tangle um, to keep the videos short. So because of that, I'm going to do that on a small tile, but you might very well be working on a larger tile. And I'm going to be using my Micron 01, which has a very fine point. This one's actually running out a little bit. But any fine point ink pen will work fine. Just don't use a ballpoint. And I also have my pencil, my Zentangle pencil. You can use this pencil. You can use any soft lead pencil. As you can see, it's very small and it fits right into my hand. And I'm going to show you why a little later. And then last of all, I have my blending tool. This is called a tortillon. You can use something else to blend if you need, but this is the standard blending tool. All right, so we're gonna get started. And the first thing that we always do in our Zentangle process is to have some gratitude and appreciation. So I always like to appreciate the moments that I have to take time out of my busy day to do this. And I like to appreciate my wonderful supplies that I have that I get to work with. And I also always encourage my students to take a few deep breaths, to stretch out their hands, stretch out their bodies, check in with themselves, get themselves into a comfortable position so they can really appreciate the time that we are doing this. So I encourage you to do that. Feel free to pause the video. And now we're going to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our pencil and we are going to create our four corner dots. And this is quite a small tile, obviously. So I'm going to put my dots pretty close to the corners because I want to maximize my space. But in a normal tile, I would probably push it out a little bit there. And then I'm going to create my border. And to create your border, all you have to do is just put a line connecting each of your dots. And I do this very lightly. Everything we do with our pencil is just a guide. It is there to give us some structure. It is not to constrain us in any way. If you go over top of your lines, that is never a problem. And don't worry about your lines being perfectly straight and even either. We are not striving for perfection. There's no eraser. There are no mistakes in Zentangle. Okay, so the tangle we're going to do today is a real quick one. This is one of my all-time favorites. There are so many different stylings for how different people do it. So I'm going to show you the way I do it. But if you look up the way other people do it, you will see it designed slightly differently or very differently depending. And it is called Mooka, and it's what we call an organic tangle. It is not at all bound by straight lines. It's very curvy, and it looks kind of like it's sort of alive. So I am going to start off, and the other thing is normally at this point we would do a string, which is our pencil line to break up our space. But since I'm doing a mono tangle, just a single tangle, I'm not going to use a string. So this is Mooka. And it goes like this. You draw kind of a long curvy line and then you put sort of a bulb on the end of it. And then you just like aura your original line so you have this long thin stem on it like that. And that is a mooka. And I like to make my mookas kind of play with each other. So I'm going to do another one right here. And there's no reason why I do them this way together like this into these shapes, except that I like to. So there are two mookas. And I could draw some going this direction. I'm going to put another one right in the middle here. And I'm going to start it a little outside so you can see me draw behind. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to start my line. And I'm going to stop when I get to my original line. I'm going to pick up my pen. But I'm going to continue as if I'm continuing on. So that I continue on on the other side of where I started. 
then I'm going to do another one. I'm going to make this one a little shallower. So you can see that's a slightly different styling than I did those first two. And then I'm going to put another one here so you can see that draw behind again. And I'm also going to make that one a little shallower. So there are four mukas. Now I could put some more, but this is a pretty small tile and it's pretty much filled up. So I'm going to stop. I often put other tangles in these, these lovely spaces here. So if I was doing a full tile, I would probably put some stuff in here. But I just really want to show you this one tangle. But I do want to show you a few different styling things. So one thing I like to do is I like to find my sort of section here. And I just put like a little sort of like line right in there. And then I color it in. And it just gives it a little bit of extra emphasis. And I'm going to do just a little bit of that on all four of them. And this is just styling. Our mukas, as mukas, are completely finished already. This is such a quick tangle. And then I'm actually going to do one more little bit of styling. I'm going to just kind of put a little bit of black right in the spots where these meet. Like a little bit of leading. Just a little bit. You can see I'm just kind of making a little curve and then coloring it in. I'm going to do that on all of the connectors. And then one other thing I sometimes like to do with my mooka is I like to put, now tipple or purse are those little round um, sort of orb shapes. So I'm going to just put a couple little orbs right in there. It kind of makes it look a little bit like a fiddlehead fern. I'm going to do that in each of them. This is not necessary and I don't always do it, but it's just a fun little thing to do to add a little bit of interest, and that one really didn't need too many, so I just put the one. This one's got a nice big space here, so I'm going to put several of them right in there. There we go. And then I'm going to blacken in these little connectors so that there's no extra room there. And there you go. So that was your basic mooka, and then I added that little bit of black and the little and the black along here the letting along here and the orbs and then get this one one more because I think it looks funny with only one and there you go so that is Mooka now Mooka is extremely fun to shade my favorite thing to do with Mooka is I take my pencil and you'll notice I'm holding it at an angle you don't want to hold your pencil up and down like you normally would when you're writing because you really want to use kind of the side of the pencil and just kind of smear a little bit of graphite down. So I'm going to put a little bit of graphite here. I'm going to put a little bit here. And when you shade in Zentangle, you don't need to worry about the direction of the light. You can, if you're an artist and you think about those things, feel free to do so. But I kind of like the freedom of not having to. So I, um, I put a little bit of graphite on each of those, like on the sort of the cheeks of those. And I'm going to take my tortillon and I'm just going to use it to sort of spread out that graphite. And you can see that I'm also using the side of my tortillon. I'm not using the point. If you use the point of your tortillon, you will absolutely crush the tip. And you can see that what that does is it really sort of rounds them out and gives them a little bit of depth, which is really nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and do one more thing. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to retrace very lightly right around the outside of my original line for my very first one that I did. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the second one. Let's see, I went around and I'm going to go around here. And I'm staying outside my original line, but nice and close to it. Because I don't really want to get the lead inside the stem, but I do want to have the lead um, close to it. Because I really want it to just make that those original two mukas sort of stand out. 
When I do mooka, I often do multiple of them. I rarely do just like one mooka. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just using the side of my tortillon to draw that. It's really just softening. It's making those lines look less like lines and more like shadows. And I, it's really just a little bit. You can either use your tortillon sort of small circles or you can just do a little bit of a line and I think I'm going to just do just a little bit more around the outside of these smaller ones that I did. I'm not going to do the whole thing the way I did that other one. The key with shading is you don't want to make everything look gray, but you do want your white to stand out. So there you go, and that's Mooka. And I love Mooka, but I will tell you, you really just need to keep practicing it until you get your styling and you're comfortable with it. So at this point, we have done our tangling and our shading, and it's time to, our, to initial and sign. So I'm going to take a look at mine. Now, I would normally suggest that you hold it out at arm's length, admire it, and choose what direction it goes. I believe these mukas are very directional, so it clearly just goes this way. And I'm going to put down my chop, which is like my signature. But you don't write a whole big long signature. You just put in your initials, and you can put it anywhere on your tile. I could put it up here so it's unattached, or I could put it in on the corner. I'm going to put mine sort of right in, tuck it right in here. So there's my initials, and I'm going to turn that over. And I'm going to sign it. I encourage you to always sign and date your work on the back so you know when you did it. So I'm going to put today's date. And I'm going to write down the name of the tangle, which is Muka. That's also one I do not know the name where the name came from. And once you have initialed and signed it, you can flip it over and hold it out and appreciate it again and enjoy the fact that you made this beautiful piece of art and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you'll come visit me again soon have a wonderful day